Hey guys, I got some nice little treat for all you chowder heads tonight. I'm making my blackened chicken corn chowder. The weather has been nice, but it's Kentucky, so it's going to turn horrible in the next couple days. So let's prepare for it. Let's get cooking. All right, now that I'm changed, it's time to start making dinner. Today's going to be my blackened, my recipe, blackened chicken. Okay, really? now that I've got. Really? Okay, now that I'm... I didn't do anything this time. I know. Okay, now that I'm changed, let's go ahead and make black and... Do you want me to write it down? No! No, I do not! I can do this! About four episodes already, damn it! Okay, now that I'm changed, let's get cooking. I'm gonna make my blackened chicken corn chowder. This is my recipe. It's a modified New England corn. Okay, now that I'm changed, let's go ahead and get cooking. I'm making my chicken corn chowder blackened. It's a modified New England clam chowder. The only modification to it is I use more heavy cream and less stock. A couple of the ingredients are changed also. So let's go ahead and start with what we're making. <laughs> Okay, we're going to start with blackened chicken breast. I've got four large chicken breasts. And I've got two eight ounce packs of salt pork. I'm going to dice that off. This rind right here is going to be cut off. It's hard, tough, you don't want to eat it. Just, you can put your knife right here, peel it all the way off. That's what I normally do. This is a double batch, so I'm going to use two quarts of heavy cream. Feel free to cut it in half. I use a lot because I either freeze it or it just doesn't last long in my house. I also use seven stalks of celery and one whole white onion. Sometimes I use yellow onion, but I'm on a budget, so whatever's cheapest. I also use 48 ounces of frozen corn. Just want to throw those in with your potatoes at the very end of it. You just want to bring it up to a boil, then you're going to put it Probably won't use a whole cup, but I have a cup of flour just as needed. By the end of the episode, by the end of the dish, we'll go back and see how much I used. I'm also using one fluid ounce of Worcestershire and one fluid ounce of Brinks Red Hot Sauce. Okay, I'm also using about four tablespoons of blackened seasoning and a half a teaspoon of white pepper. I like using white pepper, it's a little bit hotter than your normal pepper, so don't overdo it unless you like it really spicy. Another reason to use white pepper instead of black pepper is when you're making a cream based sauce, you don't see little bitty flecks of black pepper. It helps it blend it, it's more aesthetically pleasing. What's Tato's precious? What's Tato's precious? And for the Lord of the Rings fans, I'm using 10 medium sized potatoes. I'm gonna dice those up. About a uh, small to medium dice, depending on how I feel, and we'll get cooking. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and dice potatoes. A good rule of thumb, if you're slow, like me, put them in some water so they don't turn brown. And if you're really slow, you gotta worry about them sprouting. So, get them done. So we got all of our 10 potatoes peeled and diced, about medium dice. If you notice how the water is a little discolored, you want to rinse that off. That way you don't get all that water in your mix. So I'm going to go ahead and dice up my chicken now because that needs to go first. Okay, so we're actually going to start with our salt pork. We want to get the fat rendered. That's a chef's term for melting the fat. You want to get that in with your vegetables. That way you can saute your onion and your celery and get that flavor really mixed in. So we're going to start with that first. This piece right here is the rind off your salt pork. You don't want that. That's why we went ahead and uh, cut it up. So now we're gonna go ahead and dice our salt pork. And that's going in the skillet first. I like to dice mine up really small. That way you get a few chunks of salt pork in every bite. I feel like I'm being watched. I sense something. 
a presence I've not felt since. It's always a good idea to start when you're making anything, you have to cut it up. Either have two cutting boards or start with your vegetables first. That way if you start with meat, you have to wash your cutting board. If you do your vegetables, well, it doesn't really matter. You can do your meat right on top of that. Okay, so now we have our celery cut. It's time to move on to the onion. Good trick is to keep your onion refrigerated. That'll cut down on the amount of juice that gets in your ass, prevents some tears. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and cut our chicken up. We're going to do this in a couple stages. Since we're going to black it. I want chicken cut into fillets. That way I can get a good even sear on all the meat and really get that crust in it. A lot of people say it's just a waste of time because you're going to put it in the chowder anyway. But any flavor you can add to your meal enhances everything. Okay, so now I've got my chicken in the place. We're going to go ahead and season it with liking. Make sure you get a really good coating on that. Here. Normally you want to do this outside because it is going to smoke. The skillet's good and hot. It's going to smoke. So be prepared for that. Getting ready to throw half a stick of butter. Let it get good and brown. And I'm going to blacken my, my chicken. Right now I'm using what's called a long dub. Uh, bigger than average skillet. This is what I make my hand. Just go crazy over it, the more I make, the more they eat. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get our potatoes boiling. I've got chicken stock going because I want my potatoes nice and al dente. So let's get those boiling. So our chicken is blackened, turned out really beautiful, and it's done. So now I've got one more batch of chicken to cook, so we're going to let this rest. And all those juices come out, and that way once we move to our next step, which is going to be the salted pork, we're going to let this fawn in here. Fawn is, I believe it's French for tasty bits. We'll let all those tasty bits mix in with the rest of the food. That's what brings this meal together. Okay, so now I'm going to make a slurry. This is not exact. That's enough flour. That's about a half a cup. I'm going to add just enough water, maybe three quarters of a cup, maybe a cup. Just, I want the flour to dissolve. This is my thickening agent. Slurries are used for thickening gravies and sauces. Real basic step. Okay, so now I've got enough water in there to go ahead and dissolve this. Always use cold water. Hot water is going to cook your flour and it won't work right. As you can see, this is good and smoking hot. Now it's time to add our salt pork in there. Mix that in there with the leftover chicken fawn. I'm going to saute this at high heat. Okay, now we let that cook. You can see all that fat coming out rendered pretty nicely. Uh, one more minute and then we're going to add our vegetables. We're going to start with our celery. It's thicker than the onion. I don't like crunchy celery. So you cook that first. I've got my burner on medium high. Good temperature, just leave it alone. Now here's the stuff you can do in the middle waiting the potatoes 
and your celery cook. You can start cutting your chicken. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and add the onions. Celery's all nice and soft. Whole onion right in there. Saute that. If I haven't mentioned before, sauteing is a term that means high heat, cooking very quickly. We're going to let that cook about four or five minutes. Make sure the onions get good and soft. I'm going to go back and check my potatoes and the chicken stock. Okay, so cooking the potatoes and chicken stock gives a really good flavor. And when you cut them all the same size, or roughly the same size, as you know, me, it allows them to cook evenly. That way you don't have a really big piece that's hard and a small piece that's overcooked. So always uniformly cut your vegetables. Cuts down on your cook time and makes the meal more enjoyable. Okay, so this is nearly ready. So I'm going to go ahead and throw my other half a stick of butter in. Butter. Butter. Now that my stock is still boiling, 24 ounces of corn. So I'm going to push all my meat and vegetables out of the way. I want as much rendered fat and butter as I can get to make my roux. There's a lot of different variants of roux. You've got blonde, brown, red, and black. We're going to make a nice brown roux. I'm going to add flour. A little bit at a time. You want to cook the flour. Right now you can tell it's a nice blonde roux. I want a little darker than that. Okay, we're almost done with this. Flour sticking to the veggies now. Oopsie. Come on, we've all done that. Okay, so now this is where I'm going to put my heavy cream and get the sauce going. Yes, folks, that is a lot of heavy cream. You notice I'm not pouring it all in once. I'm going to cool the temperature of the skillet off too fast, and that's not what I want. Just add a little bit at a time. And we're going to add in half a quart of whole milk. We're going to let that come to a boil. While we're waiting, I'm going to add just a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. One just star shine. What? Yeah, one just a shine. One one just shishara. One just shush shush sh sh Shoe shower. And Frank's red hot. And this is where we add our white pepper. Taste your food often. Because it's a lot easier for me to add spice right now versus when it's done. About a half a teaspoon of salt is good. Sauce is good to go. A nice thickness to it. I'll probably thicken up a little bit. So we're slurry. The whole thing there. Chowders you want really good and thick. You want hearty. Otherwise it's just soup. Now we're going to add our potatoes. Let's 
fold that in there. Almost done. Now we're just going to put our corn, which is second to last ingredient. Now we're going to add just a touch of chicken stock, a little bit more flavor. Okay, and this right here finishes my blackened chicken corn chowder. Turn the heat off. Let it sit five minutes for that chicken to incorporate your flavor into the meal. And after that, it's time to eat. Okay, this has been my version of chicken corn chowder. It's been a lot of fun to make. Feeds my kids. I won't have any leftovers. That humongous pot behind me is going to be gone by tonight. So, appreciate you tuning in, watching. Hope you had fun. Give me a like, ring the bell, subscribe. If you got any questions, concerns, comments, gripes, something I did wrong, something you didn't like, let me know. Love to talk to you. Food's done. Let's go eat. I'm the F-Work Chef. I'm out.